Hey guys, Christian Babcock here of The Hunter's Advantage, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about every bow hunter's favorite subject these days, heavy versus light arrows. We're gonna do a few things in this video today. We're gonna to walk you through the pros and cons of a heavy arrow, the pros and cons of a lightweight arrow. We're gonna shoot a couple different arrows, and we'll sum it all up in our final thoughts. Every single thing that we're gonna talk about in this video comes from personal experience, and we're gonna be overlaying kill shots and different experiences that we've had while bow hunting with heavy and light arrows over the years. So let's get into the video. And just so we have some parameters of what we're describing as a light arrow and a heavy arrow, um, a light arrow to us is gonna be anything from 350 grains to 450 grains, and a heavy arrow is gonna be anything from 500 grains to 700 grains. And yes, I realize there is a gap in between those two measurements that I gave you. I do think there is a set of arrows that are in a moderate weight. Please note before we get too deep into the video, I am not a physicist. I am simply a bow hunter who is talking about some of his experiences. So let's start out with the pros of the heavy arrow. My personal setup is a Easton four millimeter FMJ. This is 540 grains. I run a variety of different heads on this arrow. Thorn fixed blade broadhead right here. One of the reasons that I ended up switching to heavy arrows was I was having some penetration issues in my early days of archery, say the first five years that I was bow hunting. And in 2019, I wanted to switch it up. I had seen all of this movement, all this talk about heavy arrows. So what are some of the pros of a heavy arrow? In my mind, it's a few different things. It's more penetration, it's more momentum, it's less speed loss over time. And since the arrow is heavier, it can absorb a lot more of the energy that a bow is applying to the arrow, therefore making less vibration, less shock, and less sound. So heavier arrows equal quieter shots. Since sound travels at 1128 FPS and a fast bow would shoot 280 FPS with a heavy arrow, I don't know if it matters that the arrow is much quieter at all, but it definitely cannot hurt. Let's talk about the first thing which is penetration. There's no doubt that a heavier arrow is going to penetrate a lot better. You see a lot of people talking about kinetic energy when it comes to bow hunting, but momentum is actually a better measure to determine not only how the arrow is going to get to the target, how it is gonna continue once it meets some resistance going through that animal. So I'll pop up a quick momentum chart right here that's gonna describe how much momentum you need for some of the different game animals across the United States. And I'm also gonna pop up a quick chart of some certain grains of arrows and how much momentum those end up producing. And I think what you're gonna see throughout the majority of these charts that I'm showing you right here, somewhere in that 450 grain arrow range is gonna be able to harvest pretty much any big game animal in North America from a momentum perspective. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't shoot a heavy arrow. I don't wanna to get too technical into these numbers, but what I have experienced with shooting a heavier arrow is way better penetration. Very rarely do I not get a pass through. I can show countless examples of heavier arrows penetrating deeply and passing all the way through animals on shots that I previously wouldn't have got pass-throughs on with a lighter arrow. Despite some people's belief, just because you're shooting a heavier arrow, say you're shooting something 600 grains and up, that doesn't give you free permission to go and shoot a deer right in the shoulder and expect it to penetrate all the way through. Obviously in bow hunting things happen, so having a heavier arrow in a lot of ways, if you make more of a marginal shot, maybe nick a little bit of that shoulder, you possibly will be able to get better penetration than you would out of a lighter arrow. And anyone that's been bow hunting long enough knows the difference between one or two inches of penetration could be the difference between bringing that deer home or it surviving, living the rest of its life out in the woods. You're not just trying to build an arrow that is fast when it comes out of the bow, you're trying to build something that, that maintains its speed over time. So one of the analogies that I've heard from the ranch fairy is you're not building an arrow to get to the animal, you're building an arrow to get through the animal. So for the guys that are speed freaks, that's just something to consider. You know, it doesn't really matter as much how fast the arrow is coming out of the bow, how much of that kinetic energy and momentum is the arrow keeping at point of impact with the animal, and is it gonna have enough energy to pass through the animal at those longer shot distances? If you can't tell, I do have a lot of love for these heavy arrow setups, but there is definitely some cons that come along with shooting a heavy arrow. One of the immediate cons is the arrow is going to be slower. 
I think it's easy to get hyper fixated on how fast the arrow is coming out of the bow, but in some sense, it does matter. I mean, we don't wanna be shooting a arrow that's so heavy it's only shooting 150 FPS. Some loss of speed is okay, but you're going to see it in your setup. For instance, when I was shooting a lighter arrow way earlier in my hunting career, what I noticed was I was getting in those 280 FPS ranges with my bow with you know 450 grain arrow somewhere in there. But when I bumped that number up to a 525 and a 540 in the last few seasons, I very rarely get over 270 FPS out of my setup. If you're someone that likes to squeeze the most amount of speed out of your bow, a heavy arrow setup is not gonna do that for you. So with those heavier arrows being slower, what you're gonna notice when shooting at those longer distances, you'll probably start noticing around 40 yards, but you'll see this looping trajectory on your arrow. You'll realize when you let go of that arrow how much it actually loops to get into the target. So that can really be an issue when you're in tight quarters or areas where there's overhanging branches or limbs. One of the things you're gonna have to consider is if I shoot that deer head on, is my arrow going to come and encounter that limb before it gets to the animal since it's shooting more of a looping trajectory instead of a little bit more flat with a less heavy arrow. And the final con that I'll talk about with a heavy arrow is you have to be a lot more precise in your ranges because of the drop. Let's just say you're shooting a 400 grain arrow. If you range that deer, he's at 20 yards and he walks out to 24 yards, the difference between 20 and 24 on a very lightweight setup is gonna be marginal, maybe an inch or less. Let's talk about the same scenario. That deer is at 20 yards and you draw back and he's actually moved out to 24 yards now. The difference of four yards on that heavier arrow could be more like two or three inches. So it's very, very important to get an exact yardage when you're hunting with a heavy arrow. If you're shooting a fixed pin sight, whether that's a three pin or a five pin, what you're gonna notice is with a heavier arrow setup, you're gonna see a lot more pin gap. So with a lighter arrow, you might see a little bit of distance and a lot of times at 20 and 30, you might see your pins even touching. The heavier you go, the wider gap you're gonna see in those pins. So that 30 and 40, those pins might not even be on the animal. So if that deer is in between 30 and 40 and you have to pin gap them, this pin might be on the bottom of the stomach where this one sits on the top of the spine. And it just makes it a little harder to be precise. All right, so we've talked enough about heavy arrows. Let's move into the pros and cons of a light arrow. One of the things I do like about an, a lighter arrow is you can squeeze more FPS out of this. At the same arrow length, it has a lower grains per inch, whereas that heavy arrow might be you know, 10 to 12 grains per inch. This lighter one could be anywhere from seven to nine grains per inch. So you're gonna get more speed out of that arrow. And just like I talked about earlier on the momentum chart, if you're shooting anything 420 grains and up, you should, in theory, be able to kill any big game animal in North America with an accurate shot. So another pro of the lighter arrow is a flatter trajectory. So you're not gonna have to worry as much about those overhanging limbs. Depending on the distance, you might not have to. But one of the things I really like about the lighter arrow is that pin gap that we talked about that was super wide on a heavy arrow, that is going to start to shrink on a lighter one. I would always recommend that you get the exact yardage before taking a shot. But if I get into a scenario where I get into full draw and that deer takes three more steps in the opposite direction or more towards me, it doesn't worry me as much with a lighter arrow that I'm gonna have a lot of difference in that three yards that that deer has moved. If you like to think about it in terms of how much time the deer has to duck, it's gonna have less time with a lighter arrow. I don't think there's any research or science that we can cite that says that shooting a lighter arrow faster matters and when a deer is gonna duck. In my opinion, when a deer is ducking, you're probably not gonna get him anyway. So with the light arrow, we've talked about how it's faster, how it has a flatter trajectory, how the pin gap is gonna be less, and how you don't have to worry as much if the deer is one yard, a few yards off than that distance that you dialed your sight into. Let's dig into some of the cons of the lighter arrow right now. So what you're gonna notice as we're walking through this video is everything that is a pro of the heavy arrow is a con of the light arrow. So just like we've talked about through the video, the light arrow is going to have less momentum. It's going to have worse penetration. It's going to be more susceptible to crosswinds. 
and it's gonna have a quicker drop off of FPS than that of a heavy arrow. One of the issues with a lighter arrow, it comes off the bow a lot faster, but the speed of the arrow also slows a lot faster than that of a heavy arrow. You're gonna give up some penetration, you're gonna give up some momentum, but you just have to ask yourself, when is enough enough? Where it really worries me about a lighter arrow is at those longer distances when the speed has degraded enough and it's hitting a lot slower than that of a heavier arrow, that worries me. I'm personally not a professional archer, so I need to be able to count on a little more, more penetration. And on those lighter arrows, that's something you're gonna have to worry about. So here I have an Easton four millimeter FMJ. Like I said, 540 grain arrow here with my setup. And I have an Easton 6.5 millimeter carbon arrow. And this arrow weighs 480 grains. So we have about a 60 grain difference between these two arrows. Earlier we've talked about the drop off and the pin gap that a heavy arrow brings with it. So I just wanted to show you the difference between these two arrows and they're 60 grains at 20 yards in my backyard. So let's shoot a couple arrows. All right, first one we're gonna shoot is gonna be the Easton because this is what my sight is dialed to. I've got a prime Nexus 4 here set at 20 yards, 70 pound draw, 30 inch draw length. With this arrow set up, I shoot at about 262 feet per second. We'll try to put this one dead center just so we have a reference point for when we shoot the lighter arrow. All right, so that looked pretty good. Let's shoot the lighter one and see how high it is. 480 grain arrow going down range. So this is the arrow that I actually bought to shoot the total archery challenge in Beaver's Bend, Oklahoma last February. So this is one of my target arrows. But honestly, it would be a decent hunting arrow too. Shoot this one at 20. All right. Let's go take a look at that. I think these arrows are gonna show me what I thought, which is there's a, there's a gap or a difference even at 20 yards. And you gotta think this gap gonna be made bigger at each further distance that you go. So from 20 to 30 to 40 to 50, heck even 100, this distance is gonna get bigger and bigger. This is my Easton four millimeter and this is my Easton 6.5 millimeter carbon versus full metal jacket. Just at 20 yards, you can see we were talking about aiming center of the target on this four millimeter, and it did just that. I mean, it's dead center in that black as you can get. And here, my 6.5 millimeter. All right, I ran inside and got a tape measure just so I can give you guys an exact measurement of what this is like at 20. As you guys can see, that is roughly, very roughly, two inches. And a lot of folks might say, you know, why does that matter? You could just sight in your lighter arrow at 20 yards and they were hitting the same spot. What I'm doing here is showing you the difference in gap between an arrow that is just 60 grains difference than another. So let's sum all this up for you in some final thoughts. There's a lot of pros of a heavy arrow. There's a lot of cons. There's a lot of pros of a light arrow and there is a lot of cons. And what you've noticed probably throughout this entire video is why not shoot something in the middle? And that's exactly what I'm gonna propose to you guys that have watched this far into the video. If you noticed at the beginning, there was a gap between the light arrow and the heavy arrow. But my sweet spot for arrow builds is somewhere in between 450 and 550 range. I think in between that 450 to 550 range is what makes me comfortable in my setup. It gives me enough confidence in the penetration that I'm gonna get when I'm shooting through animals, but also doesn't take away so much of my speed that I don't get as much range out of my adjustable one pin sight. So for me, that middle ground between 450 and 550 is the perfect secret spice of the amount of momentum that I need, the amount of speed that I need, the trajectory that I want, and it has been my experience shooting this through animals that this works perfect for me. And that's one of the things I wanna to stress to everyone that's watching this video. 
you need to build an arrow setup that is unique to your abilities, styles, and goals. Some of you guys might be whitetail hunters and you don't need to shoot more than 40 yards. And if that's the case, you might consider building a much heavier arrow with a lot more pin gap in your sight because it doesn't really matter to you. Or you might be someone that hunts out west and wants to push those 70, 80, 90 yard shots, but still have enough weight to pack a punch when you get out there. It's really unique to each individual what style they have, how good of a shot they are, and the goals that they have with their archery hunting. The more accurate that you are, the less that weight starts to matter. If you can command that arrow pretty much exactly where you want it to go every single time, weight's probably not gonna be a huge issue for you. But for someone like me, that's not a professional archer and just considers himself a bow hunter, I want a little bit more weight so I can ensure better penetration if I am off an inch or two either way, high, low, left, or right on that arrow and I wanna know I can still blow through that animal. At the end of the day, most of this probably won't matter if you're shooting a arrow over 400 grains and you're accurate and you practice often. I hope you guys learned something with this video. I had a ton of fun putting it together for you guys. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. And if we have any experience on your question, we'll try to answer it as educated as we can. Make sure to consider subscribing to the channel. It would mean the world to us and we have the best community on all of YouTube. But I'm gonna leave you with two things. Don't forget when you're out bow hunting this season, have fun and shoot straight. We'll catch you guys in the next one.